Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, at LA Jr. And joining me is Imran, the Don Khan. Imran, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Blessing. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Mm. I'm doing pretty good. What is your shirt? It is a Dragon Quest Eleven shirt. Oh. Yeah. See, that's how you know that I'm like a, a young kid because I, I immediately thought Undertale when I saw that. I was yeah, like, oh, no, cool. that's that's the most young thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Like, I kind of want to spend the next hour just asking you if you remember certain things. Oh, man. It, ask me what I know about Dragon Quest right now. What do you know about Dragon Quest? I know that Jared Petty really liked the last one. <laughs> that is very... <barely, laughs> that, that's pretty recent, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you a big Dragon Quest fan? I, I come and go. Like, from honestly, through... I would say 9 through 10. 9 and 10 I was not super big on, but those were, like, non-traditional one ends. Mm-hmm. I, 11 I really love. I'm still not done. I'm like 60 hours in, and it's. I think Eleven's the latest one, right? Yes. Echoes of an elusive age. Yes. Okay. I waited for the Switch version, and now it's like now I'm playing that. But there's a very clear halfway point for that game. Mm -hmm. I've not hit that halfway point yet. Okay. See, that was the one I was actually waiting to play it for it to come to Switch Mm because I, all the things I heard about it made me want to try it because for me I'm very kind of hit and miss with JRPGs, Mm -hmm. and so there are some that I love. Right. I love Persona. Pokemon, if you want to count Pokemon, even though that's like baby's first RPG, but you know, I, I like I like Pokemon, and then like there are like one off ones, like the last story on Wii, I'm yeah. really big into. Um, I guess like action RPGs, right? So, dark, not Dark Souls. Oh, I, I guess I could get into Dark Souls if I want to, but like, um, uh, what's the one on PS2? I like referenced it recently. It's the one where they're like dungeons and you can like create a town, Dark Cloud, Dark Cloud. Yes, yes I really love the first Dark Cloud. Um, and like the you know, first Dark Cloud, I never heard anyone say they really love it. Really, I'm surprised. Like well, is, I never played. I guess it's the most like ta- like the most uh, town building ones. If yeah. you like that aspect, the rest are are rest. I mean, two is more Zelda like. Okay. So I really like that town building aspect. That was like my thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So going to the caves and like getting getting the the building parts and doing that, I was like, okay, this is this is great. And it had like a great soundtrack. Had a great feel. Had lovable characters. Level five, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. But then I tried the demo for Dragon Quest Eleven on Switch, and I was just like, "Wow, this is this feels deep in a way that I don't know if I'm prepared for." It's surprising. It's simple. It's just very long and like everything. Everything in that game is very elaborate. It does a job of world building that most RPGs don't do because they don't have that much time to breathe. Uh-huh. This one, like every town you go to, has like fifteen different things going on mm. and like one larger vignette. Mm. I feel you. I might try and go back because I really like that soundtrack. That mean that main thing. It gets repetitive. It, it like it, it's repetitive in a way where like even now, right? Like I can I can recall that theme because it's been in so many Nintendo Directs and so many trailers <laughs> or like so many E threes that I'm mm-hmm. just like, man, that that theme is kind of iconic now. Here's the thing. So Dragon Quest Five is my favorite. I would recommend you go play that game if you get a chance on like the DS version probably. Uh-huh. But there was a movie recently, a CG movie called Dragon Quest Your Story that is now on American Netflix. Okay. If you're never, oh yeah, I if keep you, seeing that coming up. If you're never gonna play the game, go watch that. Uh-huh. That has a weird, kind of strange ending that has nothing to do with the games. That are like I want people to experience because it's so fucking strange. Okay, I might check that out now because I keep seeing it appear and I keep thinking it's um your name is that yeah. the one the, like the other the anime romantic movie? anime movie. Yeah. yeah, and I hear great things about your name. I do too. I need to go watch that. Yeah. At some point. I also want to go watch it. But today we're not talking about your name. Today we're talking about coronavirus somehow <laughs> continuing to wreak havoc, EA permit banning a dude, and more. Because this is kind of funny games daily, each and every weekday live at 10 a.m. right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong. Go into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you, wanna, if you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for Kind of Funny Games daily. To be a part of the show, head to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad-free. And now it's time for some housekeeping. Barrett, can you do the Navi nope. hey listen voice? It's your it's your ad. I'm sorry. Do I usually read the housekeeping? No, the host. Does. You wrote this though. Yeah, but I would figure that you'd want to put all the energy into it. No, it's on you. Like, my voice can't get that high. You can't do a Navi. No, I I, oh, I believe you in you. Oh, okay, I believe in you, boss. I can't do it. Every time y'all make me do voices, it's always terrible. I can't do voices. That's why I want that's you like, to do that's it. That's like my least favorite thing to do is voices. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and get that high. I'm just gonna say, hey, listen. I'm gonna say my regular voice. Hey, I want to see you make the attempt. There you, that was fine. A little more Mickey Mouse and Navi, yeah. but you still got oh, it. Navi. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> As some of you know, 
Boss Baby Barrett spent most of the past year playing every major Zelda game, and because of your support on Patreon back in January, has been working on Zelda in review. Zelda in review, uh, or an in review special where Barrett reviews every Zelda game he played, ranks each game, and rediscovers what makes the Legend of Zelda series special. Zelda in review comes out on the third anniversary of Breath of the Wild, which is, which is March 3rd, that's next Tuesday, as a YouTube premiere at 2 p.m. Pacific time on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Make sure to come out and watch as we premiere Zelda in review and hang out in the chat as Barrett answers questions and talks to you even more about the legend of Zelda. If you're a fan of Zelda, or if you're a fan of Barrett, or if you like video games, or if you're just out there, go check that out. It's going to be awesome. It's the kind of content that I love. Barrett is really good at it. I was following Barrett before he even worked at Kind of Funny. Or they're making video essays on his own YouTube channel, and yeah. they're great. Heck In yeah. the third grade, is that what you said? No, I, I, they were great. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. You made good. <laughs> you were in the too. third grade when I was watching them, though, because because you're a baby. I'm only a year younger than you. <laughs> I'm in the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a whole year's difference, man. Tonight. It's time for the first ever PS I Love You play date. Uh, come play Firewall Zero Hour with Greg, me, David from Upload VR, and the devs. Wait, the devs are there? I guess we're playing with the devs. That's what's on the dock. Uh, just sign on and play. We'll be playing Firewall Zero Hour at 6 p.m. Pacific time tonight. And so come chill out. Uh, we'll be kicking it off over on YouTube.com slash Upload VR if you want to follow along. Thank you to our Patreon producers, James Davis, David Mintel, Mohammed Mohammed, the, na- the nail biologist, Frank Furter, Shiraz Razak, Patrick Higgins, Travis Gajkowski, Drew Gardner, Dominic Shorter, Jenny Burnt, Joseph Solar, and Katie Gallagher. Today we're brought to you by the Besties and the Gaming Ride Home podcast, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have five stories today. A Picker's Dozen. Starting out with Barrett, can you guess it? The coronavirus. <laughs> it's canceling more appearances. All right, so number one, EA pulls out of GDC over coronavirus fears. This is by Hayden Taylor over at GamesIndustry.biz. Electronic Arts is the latest company to withdraw from the Game Developers Conference next month in San Francisco. Along with Sony, Kojima Productions, and Facebook, EA has decided it will not attend GDC in response to growing concerns over coronavirus. Quote, Having closely followed the global situation with coronavirus and with the recent escalation of cases in new regions, we have decided to take additional steps to protect the well-being of our employees, including the restriction of all non-essential travel. As a result, we are also canceling our official participation at GDC and limiting attendance to other events. We are continuing to monitor... We are continuing to monitor the situation and will adjust guidelines to our employees as as we feel is appropriate, end quote. The number of reported cases of the virus has reached 80,000 since, uh, since December and over 2,500 people have died. Imran, does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise, oh, it surprised me a little because I assume what EA is essentially saying is all the people who don't live in California don't come here for this conference. Yeah. Like, EA is not far from here. EA is like... From here, this location, it's like four miles. Like five. So not very far away. Like, yeah, it's if they wanted to go to San Francisco for the Game Overs conference, yeah. nothing stopping them from that studio or that building from going. Mm-hmm. I think what they're saying here is like everyone who flies in from Dice or other places, mm-hmm. don't bother. It's, we're worried about spreading that disease. We're worried about our uh, workforce actually coming in and, you know, being susceptible to this sort of thing. Yeah. That said, they probably didn't need to pull out a GDC. There's probably no real worry of like actually getting. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think there's there's any worry of yeah. getting Corona. I mean, and let me say, I'm I'm not ninety nine percent. There's not a worry. There's that one percent. You never know what's gonna happen. But yeah, yeah we're both gonna be there. So like, I'm trying to tell myself there's no worry. Yeah, no. But, like, <laughs> if I go there and all of a sudden there's an outbreak, I'm gonna be like, yo, I I should listen to PlayStation. But if, if there's an outbreak in San Francisco, like that's. Then I I get to stay home from work. It's great. <laughs> but I mean, like GDC is not going to be the thing inoculating it. It's For, yeah. I mean, nerds, right? Am I right? <laughs> Ooh, we're we're kind of gross. <laughs> There's conferences in downtown San Francisco like all of the time. Yes, all of the time. There's people who don't live in San Francisco who are walking around. If it hasn't happened, like we've had, I think one case here in San Francisco. There's been maybe? ten in California, like in Bay think, Area. Yeah, wait, what, really? Um, of coronavirus? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I, I believe it's. Me. It wasn't someone who got it in San Francisco. They were, like, they were elsewhere. Or, I think yeah. that they were on the cruise and they came. To, are they? They're from San Francisco. So they're back. That said, the thing about coronavirus is that it's asymptomatic for a very long time mm-hmm. and has a long gestation period. So you could not have symptoms and come home and still like, you know, be uh, contagious. 
or still whatever. Yeah. So that's part of the worry with this specifically is like you could go to a convention, be perfectly fine, shake as many hands as you want. And then, then you realize you have it afterwards. Yeah. How much of this do you feel like is a domino effect from Sony pulling out of both PAX and GDC and that being a big story this last week? I, I'd say it's probably some, like, I think there's some factor to that. Uh-huh. Because, like, if Sony pulls out and then you do go and then your people do get sick and you are somewhat blamed for spreading the disease to new areas, mm-hmm. you don't want to be like, oh, we had no idea. It's like, no, Sony just said, like, hey, we're worried. We're not going to do this. Yeah. You decided you're going to say, fuck the risk. We're going to do it anyway. Yeah. The way I've been kind of looking at it uh, when Sony has been pulling out has been the idea of like what the work culture might be like there as far as people maybe not wanting to travel. Right. And right. and how that conversation goes when you're a higher up or you are a leader of a team and, and you're hearing people being like, hey, no, I don't want to go because we've been hearing about whether it is coronavirus, like the actual virus or like airports shutting down or potential like potential issues arising from the idea of traveling to a convention or to a to a, a place where people come are coming in and out, right. right? Like I've been kind of viewing it from that lens, and I could see it being a similar thing where um, EA, right? Maybe workers at EA see Sony pulling out and being and and like from that have a reaction of like, oh yeah, I if they're if they're not going, maybe that's saying something. Maybe we shouldn't go because you know they're taking they're, they're taking all the precaution. Why aren't we mm-hmm. right? Like what what are what's different about us that? You know they're willing to to make that sacrifice, but we aren't. Well, I mean, so one big difference is EA is the first non-Japanese company to start pulling stuff out of gaming events mm-hmm. for coronavirus-related issues. Sony did it. Square Enix has done it for the Final Fantasy fourteen team. Yeah. They're still doing stuff yep. at PAX, but Final Fantasy XIV's developers aren't coming. Kojima Productions. Kojima Productions is not coming. Capcom pulled some stuff from Monster Hunter Festival. Yep. Some stuff from PAX as well. I those made more sense because Japan is kind of bungling their coronavirus reaction and. You have to go through international airports to get to America if you're in Japan. Like, obviously, it's an island. You, you can't really drive over here. EA is the most interesting one because they're like, okay, well, we're not, just not going to it. And again, they still have to do, go through international airports for everyone. So maybe it is just an issue of some people could go and some people couldn't. They didn't want to just have the HR nightmare of saying, oh, we're going to pay for some of you. The rest of you can't go. Yeah. Number two, Imran. Hmm. Capcom developers and Square Enix pull out of PAX East. Barrett, can you believe it? This is from Rebecca ba- Valentine of GamesIndustry.biz. Capcom and Square Enix have joined a growing number of companies canceling plans for PAX East in the midst of the spread of coronavirus. Square Enix specifically cited the, n- the novel coronavirus as the reason for its absence in an announcement today. The publisher said it would scale back its panel appearances, signing sessions, and fa- fan gatherings as its team coming as its team coming from the, the Japan office would no longer be traveling. Capcom said in a tweet uh, that while it, w- it would be continuing its planned uh, Monster Hunter Festa event in Boston during PAX East, the developers from the Monster Hunter team would no longer be attending as originally planned. Capcom did not specify whether or not the cancellation was no- was novel coronavirus related. When reached for comment about the reasons for their absence, Capcom referred GamesIndustry.biz back to the original tweet. So this uh, this goes along with what you're saying, right? Where Capcom mm-hmm. and Square Enix, both Japanese companies, makes sense for them to kind of be more concerned yeah. about not going. You don't want to risk anyone. And like, Coronavirus has a mortality rate of about 2%. That's, yeah. I mean, relatively low, but, yeah. or not relatively, it's actually in a vacuum very low, but relatively, when you think about the mortality rate of the flu, mm-hmm. which is 0.001% or something like that, yeah, it seems a lot more dangerous because of that. And as it starts spreading to different countries, it's less that your Japanese uh, developers will be unsafe if they come to America, and more that if they took it to America, it becomes a big problem. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey P. Long writes in. It says, good morning, good early morning, Blessing and Imran. I keep forgetting that we are early, which is throwing me off. Yeah. The big news today is that EA is pulling out of GDC this year. I don't know a whole lot about GDC or the type of, of money com- conventions like, the, like these in general. Um, or actually, let me read that again. I don't know a, lo- a whole lot about GDC or the type of money conventions like these in general. So, okay, yeah, that is really well. <laughs> so my question is, does GDC get canceled? It seems like the big names are dropping like flies for the organizers, but I'd imagine they've already put a lot of money into this year's convention. Is it too late for them to cut their losses now? This is a tough situation for everyone involved. So either way, I wish the best for the organizers and all the devs who normally attend. At what point does GDC get canceled, Imran? Probably no. Like, unless th- something really went wrong, like there's a coronavirus outbreak in San Francisco, yeah. that's when it gets canceled, when it's actually dangerous for people to be here. But 
I think big players dropping isn't really a concern. It's not good for TDC, but it's not a huge concern for them. I'm sure they're not happy the fact the fact that like their headlining Kojima panel is now gone. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, GDC is not that kind of convention. GDC yeah. is for like people to meet and network. The people who this really screws over are the people who work for EA and Sony and all that who come here to learn and network and stuff like that. EA does a lot of recruiting at GDC. Like for the next year of their game development, they find people here who like like would be interested in working at EA. Mm. So that's the main thing. But honestly, it's not gonna like EA doesn't need to be here technically. Like they employ a lot of people, but the mo- more of the people you see at GDC are people who like. Indie developers and small, like people who work at like Vigil, or not Vigil because Vigil's dead, but like Deep Silver or things like that, that want to just be here so they can figure out what the next generation of shading architecture looks like. Yeah. I think for me, right, the situation for coronavirus in the US right now is so tame, right? Like there are not that many uh, cases in the US right now. 57, I think. Okay, that's more than I thought. <laughs> but even still, right, 57 is not high enough of a number to cancel something like uh, GDC or even PAX, right? PAX East specifically is this week, right? And so at one point, it's too late. But also, like, there that that is such a big event that I couldn't see anything happening to PAX. GDC, I don't know much about GDC because this is my first one I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I'm coming, but it, doesn't, it, it also seems like an event that is, like, big enough that you don't want to – you don't want to just, like – you know, take that off the books for people. You want to have people, you want to give people the choice, which is why I think companies are, are bowing out, right? Because they want to give people the choice of whether whether or not they want to go or not, right? Or they don't want to have to, they don't, they don't want to feel like they're making people go mm-hmm. uh, with the, when they're quote unquote like at risk. Well, to be clear, if your company's not paying for you to go to GDC, then you're not going to GDC. Yeah, that's like, a good point. That's passes good point. are upwards of $1,500 plus mm-hmm. travel to San Francisco and staying in San Francisco. Like, yeah. it's not cheap. Yeah. But, like, I, I think Sony explicitly, like, yeah, GDC and PAX are big things, but, like, they're not talking about GDC and PAX in isolation. Sony right now just has an outright travel ban for their employees. Mm-hmm. So, like, you can't really come to these things if you have a travel ban going on. So, yeah. it just happens to be that they're not going. Yeah. I'd be very surprised to see if GDC, or I'd be very surprised if GDC got canceled. I don't see that happening. Yeah. It's um, too soon and too. That's the word, like, ancillary to what's going on. Yeah. And the situation's not at that point yeah. yet. There has been, like, a movement recently for to, like, encourage developers and the Game Developers Convention or Conference to move it outside of America. And I kind of wonder if this is going to be a thing that, like, kind of helps them do that. Really? How so? Because I, f- I would feel – I would think that this would, ha- would have them keep it in America, right? Because – Well, so not saying China specifically, but part of the problem is that, like, let's say you're a Pakistani game developer uh-huh. and you're, you got one scholarship to come GDC – there's a decent chance that you just don't get the visa. Okay. Because yeah. they're, like the, the Muslim ban does affect things like uh, GDC. So like this is an issue that has been happening la- this year, last year, and the last couple of years. Uh-huh. But like there's a number of people who get GDC passes and they just can't come here. So people like they're saying, what if we just move it to Europe for like, and see if that works any better? Mm-hmm. See if like the visa because the visas are generally more less restricted to countries like that. Gotcha. And so more international people can, can show up and have access. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that they'll ever do that, but that, like, if this is a thing of putting in San Francisco, which is one of the most expensive cities to stay in, one of the most expensive cities to throw a convention in. Yeah. Like, maybe they, this is a thing that makes them consider, like, okay, this is just not working for us because people are now concerned that if they do come to GDC and if there is a coronavirus scare, not even necessarily like an like outbreak or anything like that, mm-hmm. a scare, yeah. and you have to say, get checked out by a doctor. If you're somewhere that like gets free healthcare all the time and have to get checked yeah. by a doctor in America, that's suddenly a major expense. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Hmm. Number three, a FIFA pro has been permanently banned from all EA games and services. This is by Matt Kim of IGN. Have you seen this one yet? I saw this on Twitter. I haven't actually read the story yet. Okay, it's wild. it's it's wild. <laughs> it's interesting. FIFA pro player Kurt Kurt zero four eleven. Uh, Finetch has been banned from all from playing all EA games or accessing EA services. That's the part that gets me banned from playing all <laughs> EA games. It's a lot of games to be banned from. The company announced the un- the unprecedented move comes from after a months long public feud between Finetch and EA, which the company says quote crossed a line of decency into very personal attacks and breach breach our terms of service end quote. Finetch tweeted out. Tweeted, tweeted out about his ban by publishing an email EA sent him notifying the permanent closure of his account. In a follow-up tweet, Finesh wrote, quote, End of the day, I've never said anything I shouldn't I shouldn't have. 
this is just deeper than anyone thinks. They didn't want me competing at events because they were scared I'd win them. Now I'm the second biggest streamer of their game, and they're scared I'll overtake their golden boy, end quote. And then Kurt tweeted, he screenshotted the, the, the email that EA sent to him, and then he tweeted, incredibly stuff. No, that, yep, that's what he said. Incredibly <laughs> stuff, honestly. <laughs> Banning me from their esports events wasn't enough. Trying to get my Twitch and YouTube channels banned wasn't enough. They now shut down my 10 year plus FUT founder account, which is FIFA Ultimate Team. No words. The article continues, Finesse has been an outspoken critic of EA over the past two years, escalating in a series of social media attacks on the company and antagonizing EA employees. During one live stream, Finesse was caught on camera calling an opponent a, quote, son of a bitch who can't beat me even on this piece of trash game. Fuck you, EA, end quote. <laughs> That's his words, not mine, EA. He also spat on an EA, lo- man, he also spat on, e- on an EA logo stitched onto a scarf. <laughs> EA responded to these repeated attacks by permanently banning Finetch from all FIFA esports competitions in 2019 and beyond. EA released the following statement, quote, In November 2019, after a series of code of conduct violations as part of EA Sports FIFA Global Series, in which he threatened employees and other players, Kurt0411 was banned from competing or attending any EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series events or future competitions. Since that time, Kurt has con- continued to post abusive and threatening messages and videos about EA employees and competitive players on social media, and he has encouraged others to do the same. His message, his messages have crossed the line of decency into very personal attacks and breach our terms of service. We will not tolerate threatening behavior. As a result, today, Kurt 0411's EA account will be banned from playing our games and accessing our services due to these serious and repeated violations and quote so basically he was just a huge dick and they're yeah, like yeah basically no. he was an asshole and they were like enough is enough you don't get to play fifa or ea ufc <laughs> like <laughs> you're done you're done you're not playing me for speed or nothing i like the idea of like him going to a GameStop and like buying a copy of mass effect and someone just rushes yeah. in and like <laughs> GameStop, employee, <laughs> GameStop employee like looks down under the counter and sees a picture of his face do like, not sell poster. ea games to this man yeah and he's like oh sorry <laughs> would you like to play assassin's creed instead sir <laughs> But, uh, hey, people, don't be a dick out there. I think that's the lesson. <laughs> I think if you're a dick and you get banned for being a dick, tr- th- currently threatening EA employees over the fact that you were banned for being a dick kind of proves their point. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, while reading the article, I didn't really read read anything that seemed like, hey, I'm going to physically attack you people. Maybe that's in there somewhere. Maybe he sent, like, DMs or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seemed like mostly, like, verbal insults as far as I could tell. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if you're able to, to find me, like, where he, got, he kind of gets – he kind of pushes beyond that. But even still, like, I I, I kind of have no patience and no mercy for people yeah. who are just out there being assholes, just be assholes. Yeah. I mean, it's a private company. They could do what they want. If they didn't like the look of his face, they could probably just, like, ban him. This yeah. is a big... I mean, I'm not saying it's right, Barrett, but I'm saying that that's... That As is a limit company, to their power. Yeah, yeah. like, you, you, you have the ability to do that if you want to. Yeah. That said... I don't have a hard. I have a hard time getting worked up in a bad way about this. Mm-hmm. Of like, yeah, this guy seemed like a dick. Maybe they, we'd be able to curb toxicity better if we got rid of people like this in general. Yeah, but if you're out there being a dick, remember he might not just get banned from FIFA. He might get banned from EA entirely. <laughs> and that's a lot of games. That's Jedi Fallen Order, which is oh. a single player game. So they probably can't really actually ban him from that. But still, be careful. <laughs> which company would hurt you the most to get banned from? Oh man. Ooh. That's a great question. That is a great question. I guess probably Sony first party, <laughs> right? Like if Sony just didn't like me as a company, that kind of suck cuz yeah. it's like that's yeah, that's how to your career. That would be a problem. Yeah. But I, I, I what I want to know is how you enact that ban, right? Because I imagine right, if so if I pissed off Sony for whatever reason and they're like no more for you. You don't get to play Sony <laughs> games. They're single player games and I can just make a new account. Like how far does that go? Mm-hmm. Right? Can Finetch just make a different account to and which he plays under, right? Not him. And I imagine like what the ban really is is for competitive stuff with him since or yeah i imagine he's a competitive yeah. player right and so i imagine he can just not go to tournaments and compete in tournaments that's probably that's gonna that's gonna be like where the real ban is but he can just create a new account imagine being secretly. banned from gta 5 blessing that would be, that'll be a bummer but i feel like i live yeah. right like i love gta online but yeah. i've gotten my experience out of that yeah. game okay. in terms of volume getting banned from a rockstar like getting banned from rockstar in general yeah would that not would be suck. that bad that's like one game every generation yeah but that's still like probably like one of the biggest online games every yeah. generation at this point right like oh, uh, maybe the online Red is the biggest too. game yet yeah. but gta 6 is going to be huge for online and i'm going to be i'm going to want to be part of that and so to be banned from that i'm going to as long as tears it launch- fall as long eyes. as it launches well i'll be down 
What do you mean? Oh, like the online actually yeah. launched yeah, as well because yeah, yeah. GTA Five. Because I, I dropped. Well. I I wanted to get into online, but like the way it launched was like, oof, yeah, can't do it. And then I came back Dude, like I a year later, and mm-hmm. then it was like, oh fuck, it's confusing. It's cool, yeah. but it's confusing. I kind of want to get into Red Dead Online. I I tried, mm-hmm. <gasps> and then immediately was like, no, nah, too slow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that was our problem with the main game, so I don't know if the online's going to fix it. Yeah, and that, that was my thing. is like I feel like for that game, if you want to get into the online, you have to be into the idea of actually like role-playing as a cowboy, and you have to be really into that experience. Like for mm-hmm. me, for Grand Theft Auto, I like committing, <laughs> I like committing crime. Yeah. I like committing Do crimes. <laughs> I like stealing cars. I like flying cars, I guess. And like all that stuff appealed to me in a way where Red Dead Online riding that horse does not appeal to me. Yeah, Kuchoko in the chat said ban Barrett from WB Games. Oh, could you imagine you get banned from Batman, Bandman? I mean, they're basically doing that now. I would just give up on. I would just give up on games. (laughs) I would just leave. I would leave this industry. I would do something else. I feel you, man. Because if I can't have Batman, what's it? What's it for? What? what, What's Zelda Zelda for? You guys, imagine being banned from Zelda. That I could live with. Number four, Etika has been memorialized as a Pokestop. This is from Pat- Patricia Hernandez of Polygon. In, in Desmond Etika Amofa's short time on Earth, the hype, YouTube, the hype YouTuber touched countless, number, no, countless numbers of lives. Also, I should preface this with, if you don't remember Etika, Etika was the content creator that, got, that passed away, I want to say a few months ago at this point. Right, it was last year. It would have been last year, yeah. Right, so to continue the article, in nowhere is that more ap- apparent than a recent push to memorialize him in one of his re- favorite games. As of last night, a, a mural of Amofa is now an official Pokestop in Pokemon Go. The mural, which is located in the Bushwick neighborhood of New York City, was finished in late 2019. Spanning 40 feet, the gorgeous artwork was commissioned by YouTuber Double A and web designer Abe Hunter to com- commemorate Amofa's legacy as an entertainer. Around the same time the mural went up, Another campaign sparked by Pokemon Go YouTuber Reversal was underway. In November 2019, the Dutch personality asked his audience of over 350,000 fans uh, to request the mural as a stop via Pokemon Go's Wayfarer program. Wayfarer allows folks to petition for new points of interest in the mobile game, but only if you're level 40, the highest possible rank. Two months later, the petition was finally approved by Niantic, meaning that players can now congregate there to receive goodies and catch monsters. Quote, Desmond is a, is a dear friend of mine, end quote, Reversal told Polygon in a Twitter DM. I know he absolutely loved Pokemon Go. Etika has a lot of fans within the, within the Pokemon Go community. I thought it would be fantastic to have it be a Pokestop so that, uh, so that way people who love, who love Etika can send gifts from that Pokestop to, to other people in the game, end quote. Desmond Etika Amofa, who passed away in early 2019, was known as an exuberant YouTuber who primarily focused on Nintendo games. To wit, his fan base was hailed the Joy-Con boys. So that's a pretty cool thing, yeah, right? To be great. memorialized in in a in a video game, specifically in Pokemon Go, in this way, mm-hmm. right? I know there have been cases of people who have been memorialized as like NPCs in their favorite game. I think Skyrim might have had something like that. I can't remember exactly. Borderlands does it pretty often. Or Borderlands Gearbox do it. stuff in general, yeah, yeah. And so that's always nice to see. And I know like uh, um, Etika. I know for me it was like I I, I wasn't. Like super into Etika's videos, but I always I I would always see them pop up and like I'd recognize them because like there's not like a crazy amount of black content creators in like mm-hmm. the video game space, and so every time I see his face, I kind of recognize him and be like, oh cool, he's like freaking out about a Smash Brothers thing, right? And that was kind of like my the extent of my familiarity uh, and my like engagement with Etika. But uh, yeah, this is like a, a cool thing to, uh, to see. Yeah. So there you go. Number five, last news story. A Resident Evil 3 demo is on the way. This comes from Resident Evil's Twitter. They tweet, It was written in the stars. A Resident Evil 3 demo is on the way. We'll have more details in the near future. Does that excite you, Imran? I mean, no, because I just played it last week. And oh. we'll have our first impressions about that later when can today. You, when can you talk about it? Today. Oh. We're recording it later. Uh, not after Games Daily. A couple hours from now, I think. Do you want to Do you want to keep it, keep that in the pocket? Or do you it's have a anything good, to say? It's, it's fucking cool. I really okay. like that. It's a lot more action-y than I thought, but... Really? What they said it was going to be, but it's... Resident Evil 3, I was never a huge fan of it. I played the game back in the day, but I really enjoy what I played of the... I think I played about three hours of it oh, last uh, week. Yeah, Can't wait to hear about it. But Imran, when I could hear about it, so far away. <laughs> <laughs> By far away, I mean this afternoon. Uh, if I want to know what's coming out to Mom and Grab Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games Zoe Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. 
out today. We got Hay Fever for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Rune Factory 4 for Switch. Ganbare. Ganbare? Ganbar. Ganbare. Ganbare. Super Strikers for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Vita. Wasteland Remastered for Xbox One and PC. Space Channel 5 VR kind of funky newsflash for PSVR, which I'm going to be playing this week. I'm very excited about that. House Flipper for PS4. Mega Man Zero slash ZX Legacy Collection for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Two Point Hospital for Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. Infliction for PS4, Xbox One, Switch. Samurai Showdown for Switch. Sayonara Wild Hearts for Xbox One. Arcade Fuzz for Switch. Broken Lines for Switch. The Unholy Society for Switch and PC. Genesis Alpha 1 Deluxe Edition for PC. Smart Moves for PC. Broken Lines for PC. Mists of Noya for PC. And then Neverwinter Infernal Descent is now available for Xbox One and PS4. New dates. We got a Samurai Jack game has been announced today, right? Did you, did you watch this? I did watch it. Bear, bring this up, right? It's called Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. Uh, it's been announced. It's going to all platforms in summer 2020. Bear, hit that play button because the people need to see this. All so right. Like, I, I think I would have liked the game a lot more if it looked like time that. Like actual Samurai Jack does. On me. Still. Yeah, because this is like Samurai, or it's like stylized, like 3D well, then, graphics. Like, yeah, that's not... Like, it, the game looks fine. Nah, but this, this looks dope as fuck, I kind of like it. I'm so in. I'm not digging this art style really? at all. I, it's definitely like not the one I would have chosen, but I ain't Dude, mad. we got old Jack. Let's fucking go, like, man. Like, this reminds me of like something like uh, <laughs> Battle for Bikini Bottom almost, like in terms of... Like, like they did what they could making this thing 3D. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have did you ever watch the ending of the show? The, are you talking about like the season that came out? Like the more recent season. No, I've been wanting to watch it, but I don't know where to, where I can watch it. Uh, Hulu question? I don't think it's on Hulu. In fact, I don't know if Samurai Jack is on Hulu anymore. I watched like, I'll look the, it up. I rewatched, I started rewatching Samurai Jack last year on Hulu, or maybe it was the year before on Hulu, and I watched like the first two seasons, and I took a break, and I tried to go back, and I'm pretty sure they took it off. Either that or the Boondocks. I might have them confused because I rewatched both Very of similar shows. Yeah, <laughs> Very it's similar. Saying, it's saying it's on Hulu. So you're, probably, Jack? you're probably thinking of Boondocks. Okay, I'm probably thinking of, of Boondocks. Yeah. Yeah, because Boondocks is moving to, like, they're making a new season or whatever for, like, HBO Max or something. So I think HBO. Dude, I stand by. Boondocks is one of the greatest cartoons ever made. I'll, I'll, I'll say that confidently. Mm -hmm. That cartoon is great. <laughs> I haven't watched enough of it to, like, confidently say that, but I do, mm. I do really like the, I think, like, the bits that I've seen. Yeah, dude, the first few seasons of that show yeah. are chef's kiss. I think I've really only watched the entirety of season one and then a couple uh, episodes like after that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I can't not hear the like word crystal without thinking like the champagne in my yeah. head. Like, it just <laughs> auto-completes. No, it's perfect. Uh, but yeah, that Samurai Jack game is coming out this summer. It looks... looks it, I wonder how that got made. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of where my head yeah, is. Don't question it, bless. It's bless weird. It. it is one of those things where I'm like, I'm not gonna question it. I'm happy it's here. It looks different than what I would have imagined, mm -hmm. but I still I still kind of like how it looks. Where's my Johnny Bravo dating? Sim? Oh my god, a Johnny oh. Bravo game. That would be a, like a dating sim. Yeah. Oh my god. That would. That's a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. <laughs> okay, so now that we're getting a Samurai Jack video game, right? Can we finally get a Legend of Zelda? TV show that's in the style of Samurai Jack. I've been asking for that for years. Can we finally get it, please? There was a thing a while ago. Like, remember when Sony's all those emails leaked over the North Korea stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a thing where they were discussing the possibility of the Mario movie, and it didn't go this direction. It went to Illumination instead. Mm -hmm. They're saying like maybe Gendy Tartakovsky would be the person behind it, and he's the person behind Samurai Jack. God. Oh, so, so it didn't go this direction. So <laughs> yeah. like, but I wonder if maybe like I'm sure at some point, depending on maybe how Mario does, Nintendo will be looking to do Legend of Zelda stuff. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they keep his name in mind for that sort of thing. Didn't Twenty One Jump Street cross Men in Black come out of those emails too? Yes. No, I feel like we knew about that before then, and then there were like more details that came out in those emails. Is that still emails? Exist? No, no, absolutely okay. not. They never. That Dude, was never like an official so, thing. There was so much that was like. Yeah, a lot of like, learned, what the man. fuck? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> the Twenty One Jump Street cross Men in Black idea, though, I'd be super into. Only if it's made by like the people who made the original Men in Black and not their most recent movie. See, I would want the whoever like the people who ran Twenty One Jump Street to like lead that project. Yes, they made like, good movies. Yeah, they they've done good. They've done whoever well. cast the recent Men in Black movie. That's Chef Kiss. Give that yes. person, like, yeah. make that I person. I still need to watch that. Men in Black, what's it called? International or yes. whatever? 
I gotta watch that still, even though I've heard it's not that great. It's well cast, and everyone's acting their best in it. It just yeah. a is really boring like that script. Uh, that's that's unfortunate. Also, out today we have Bubble Bobble, f- or not out today. Uh, new dates: Bubble Bobble for Friends for Nintendo Switch is gonna be released March thirty first, twenty twenty. Deal of the day for Xbox Game Pass, or not Game Pass, Xbox Games with Gold. Uh, it's been announced for next month, March, and we have. Uh, sorry, I gotta enlarge this because for some reason I made this really small. <laughs> Let's see here. I gotta lean in. Batman: The Enemy Within. That's gonna be March third or March first through March thirty first. Uh, was the Shantae? Is that is that a number? I'm gonna guess. Wait, that would have been the most recent Shantae. The most recent Shantae, March sixteenth through April fifteenth. What I did was I I took the screenshot and then I pasted the screenshot into the Google Doc and now it's just the resolution is bad so I can't really read what's <laughs> there. And then there's a Castlevania game. <laughs> Lord of Shadow 2, oh, which is... Lord of mm, Shadow 2. That, that game made some choices. For 360, that's March 1st, 1st and March uh, through March 15th. And then, Barry, can you give me the one? <laughs> I fucking love it. This is on you, dude. You continually get screwed by this thing. Xbox, I don't know who's, who's responsible. If it's Sega or Microsoft or both, it's probably both, all right? I'm looking at y'all because I'm looking here, right? Xbox 360, March 16th through March 31st. Sonic Generations is free. The fuck? <laughs> I bought that game two weeks ago, full price, after waiting forever for that game to go on sale, right? That's a game that I've had my eye on. Never went on sale, and I was like, all right, you know what, man? It's the Sonic movies here. I'm really excited about Sonic. Doesn't look like this game's on sale. I just really want to play Sonic Generation, so I bought it. 20 bucks, full, which is full price for that game right now. Mm-hmm. Two days later, goes on sale for 10 bucks. You got got. You actually probably like, could have like called them and gotten adjusted. Yeah, but I'm not going to go through Now that. it's too late. Yeah, it's now, like a lot of work. No, it's been too long. And, like, come on, right? Like, it, you you put it on sale after I wait forever for that game to go on sale. It's whatever. You know, 10 bucks is 10 bucks. Am I right, Barrett? 10 bucks is 10 bucks. But then now you're telling me that this game is coming out for free? The fuck? It's all. You got all. got, bless. You got got. That's all. And then this week on Stadia, three new games are coming to Stadia Pro. Oh. Uh, pull up to the starting line and get ready to claim three more games, f- uh, three more free games with your Stadia Pro subscription. Grid, SteamWorld Dig 2, which I've heard great things about, and SteamWorld Quest are headed to Stadia Pro on March 1st. Don't get me wrong. SteamWorld Dig 2, probably a perfect video game. Really? But what a weird oh. selection of games for like the subscription or resubscription month for Stadia. Like, this is the month you want people to, like, you want to blow out the doors uh-huh. so people, like, resubscribe past their initial thing. Grid doesn't get you excited? No. Like, <laughs> Grid doesn't get, <laughs> Grid, the people who Grid gets excited are not the people who pl- are playing on Stadia. So the people point. who own, like, hardware for that. I wonder th- how many people on Stadia are playing Grid, because that's, like, an intersection of people right there. <laughs> uh, out of the 15 people s- still playing Stadia, I'd say, like, maybe one. one. And, like, people got in my case, like, you're so negative about Stadia. It's, like, it's not that I'm negative about Stadia. It's that Stadia is not pulling their weight we'll see man well yeah we'll see they i well, i expect might have steam world one next month you don't know that would <laughs> be a banger i mean th- isn't that what they basically did with tomb raider it was like they put one and then the next month they put the other one do they really do that yes hey man i'm not gonna knock you you gotta hustle <laughs> like i said if you're if you're on stadia and you're a subscriber on stadia pro if you never played steam world dig which granted that's a weird thing to like have the most powerful cloud-based hardware and like Fuck yeah, let's play a Switch game. Mm. But like, play Steam World Dig 2. Steam World Dig 2 is amazing. Just now it's time for Reader Mail. You can write into patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by the besties. Hey listeners, we know you love all things video games, so we want to tell you about a Spotify original podcast called The Besties. Every Friday, the creators of The Adventure Zone, Justin and Griffin McElroy, are joined by their two best friends and hardened video game reporters, Russ Frushtick and Chris Plant, to go deep on a single new video game. If you've been a fan of Polygon, you'll know these guys. They co-founded it. Plus, the besties cover all the major moments in video games in 2020, from new console launches to Cyberpunk 2077 and beyond. beyond. And at the end of the year, they do a complete showdown, pitting all the top games of the year against one another to get the top game of the year. It's pretty epic. But the besties can't do it without their fans who write in each week with all sorts of goofy suggestions. It's like a book club for video games. Listen, I love the besties. Uh, I started listening to them a while ago. I've been a fan of Justin Micken, uh, Micken, Griffin McElroy for a minute, 
I listened to their podcast over on Polygon back when they're there. When the, when they left Polygon, I continue to listen to my Bam Bam. That's my brother, my brother and me. They make good stuff because they're funny, they're hilarious. And uh, Chris Plant, Russ Frustick, R- Russ Frustick, also know what they're talking about. Listen to the besties. You can find the besties on Spotify, which also has your favorite podcast, including this one and music, all for free. Listen to the besties only on Spotify. Also, we're brought to you by the Gaming Ride Home Podcast. I want to tell you about a great new podcast, the Gaming Ride Home Podcast. It's a video game news. It's video game news, all the headlines, rumors, reviews, hardware leaks, release dates, confirmations, and more, all delivered to you every day at 5 p.m., perfect for your commute home. I was on the show yesterday. Were you really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I was talking about coronavirus. <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's what the video game news is this month. It's just coronavirus. Yep. And it's like, how many things can I say about, about coronavirus? Turns out at least five, ten minutes worth. Yeah. Ask me again tomorrow what my, what my thoughts are. Or I guess I'm not here tomorrow. Ask me again on Thursday what I have to say about coronavirus. I'll figure out something else. That's a shirt <laughs> that, would raise some, up. That, would ra- that would raise some questions. Ask me about coronavirus <laughs> on my t-shirt. That's actually, yeah. That, yeah. that, that would be a, a, a conversation. People are asking sure. me questions already answered on my shirt. There you go. The show is hosted by former Game Informer and IGN writer, Kyle Hilliard, and it's only about 15 to 20 minutes long. It's like Too Long Didn't Read as a Service. Kyle is online all day reading all the tweets, reading all the rumor blogs, consolidating all the chatter around the entire world of gaming so that he can he can catch you up on everything that happened while you were busy living life. This is like this is the latest show from the Ride Home Podcast Network, the daily news podcast folks, celebrating two years and 25 million downloads. Search your podcast app right now and subscribe to Gaming Ride Home. Lexus writes in and says, what's up, KFGD crew? With yesterday's exciting news about Xbox's smart delivery delivery system, I found myself extremely hyped for the smooth transition into next gen. No more spending extra cash <clears throat> on remasters of previous gen games. However, I had one big question about smart delivery. As a, primarily, as a primarily physical media consumer, do you think smart delivery will support discs? It was easy to wrap my head around how digital games could receive the, the upgraded next gen version with a simple download or patch. But using Cyberpunk 2077 as an example, do you suppose we will be able to take physical Xbox One, a physical Xbox One copy of Cyberpunk, and trade it into our retailer for a Series X copy? Or could this be a digital only perk? Thanks for all the content, guys. Keep killing it. I I think it'll support discs. I think if you buy Halo Infinite, like whatever disc you buy and put it into the system, it'll just download whatever's left. Like based on like same thing as like xbox one x yeah like if you buy quantum break wherever and just put it in your quantum break disc i don't know why i chose that game as the example yeah. but it does download all the xbox one x stuff yeah so i think that's how it's going to work on xbox series x as well i imagine so and i think it might i think it might also work in terms of the disc being a key that's how the current xbox <clears throat> xbox backs compatibility works with disc is that right now i have bioshock for xbox 360 if i put that into my xbox one that is then the key for me to be able to play the digital version of Bioshock on my Xbox One. Yeah. Right. I think it'll work either of those two ways. I don't think you'll have to trade in your disc to like then upgrade to the next gen because I feel like that I feel like they they already have the system in place to 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 ease that. Right. That it's not worth making that a whole big deal. Unless like there's some money in it, which I couldn't imagine I could I couldn't think of like why that would be the case. Mm-hmm. Of like, hey, Actually, just go back to the store and, and trade it in. I don't think that would make sense. That was the way it like them. worked with the PS3 to PS4 transition of like you could put an Assassin's Creed disc into a PS4 and it would say like, "Hey, you own the PS3 version? Can you just want to buy the PS4 one?" And oh like, yeah, that like, was like that was only a few games did that. Yeah, that though, was right? like only Ubisoft games. So yeah, I imagine this like what when they when Microsoft confirmed the backwards compatibility thing. I'm like, oh yeah, this is probably why Watch Dogs got delayed or part of the reason. Yeah, they were like Watch Dogs and like Cyberpunk and like certain. Game games, or are you talking about like earlier in the in the generation? Are no, I mean this like this is why Watch Dogs Legion Legion. Okay, yeah, 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 because yeah. gotcha. they they are now comfortable with being able to go like okay, yeah, now we can just put a thing wherever in the timeline of the year. Yeah, it doesn't and matter then, too much. Yeah, and then it will still be available for next gen. Yeah, that makes sense. I I kind of lived like a Game Pass commercial last night, honestly. Like, I I because I've been playing so many RPGs and also a game I can't talk about despite the fact it's already out in Japan and Hong Kong, but. The I've been playing those games. I felt like I wanted something arcadey, mm-hmm. so I went to Game Pass. I'm like, what should I download and play? And just Panzer Dragoon Orta was one of those games. Like, I never played this. Give it a shot. Play that for a couple hours. I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. But the fact that that game looks so good on an Xbox One X is uh-huh. shocking to me because it was an Xbox regular Xbox game. It was like a 2003 game, uh-huh. and I'm 
it actually kind of like sold me a little bit on the idea of Game Pass and smart delivery. Mm-hmm. Of if I own a Series X, it is whatever I download is it's not maybe not going to be completely remade for a Xbox Series X, but the fact that it will look as good as it can on that system is exciting to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, I'm still fuzzy on like what some of the details are going to be around how like how many developers are going to. Act, like use this feature, smart delivery, right? Or I bet some are just not going to. I bet yeah. like Capcom particularly is like half their business is remasters. Yeah, and that's my thing, right? Like how, what does that look like when you want to re- sell a remaster game on on Xbox Series X? Do people, does everybody go, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Or what does what does that conversa- conversation well, look? Do like? Do they just add like a cursory amount of new content? <laughs> yeah. To justify a new disc? Like, let's say this takes off and becomes an industry norm. What does Nintendo do? <laughs> Nintendo has made a business out of just selling like Wii U to Switch ports. Yeah, and Nintendo can kind of get away with it too because like every single one of their consoles is so different. Like you can't put a Wii U disc in a Switch. Yeah, true. And so you're, you're just like, well, I guess I have to just rebuy the Mario for the fifth time, right? Um, but you know, there there are digital like there's an infrastructure in place for digital purchases to possibly transfer to the next system. But it's, it's one of those things we just don't question because I think the systems are so different that we just assume that like, oh yeah, of course I can't play my Wii games on my Switch because so I needed my Wii mote or whatever. It's a technical hurdle, hurdle yeah. that we kind of like excuse. Yeah, I, I I am excited to see what they do with the next like, because like, we know for every game from now on is going to have that thing of what do they call it? The delivery? Smart delivery. Smart delivery. Yeah. Like. It, Every Xbox game is going to do that, but like, is every third-party game going to do that, or is it just certain partners they've been working yeah. with? Yeah. Curious to see. Mm-hmm. Ricky McFly writes in and says, There's a rumored Overwatch animated series coming. Do y'all think the series will be better as one continuous plot or more of an anthology-style approach like the Clone Wars show? Is the Clone Wars show an anthology kind of thing? The original one was. There's two different Clone Wars shows. Which one is the one by the Samurai Jack dude? That's the first one. The first one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was more of like a... Because yeah. I remember watching that as a kid. That was like a short. Yeah, it was shorts during. Was that like Toonami? Yeah. Or Adult Swim or one of those? No, was, that, was, that or, was Cartoon Network. Was it Cartoon Network? Yeah. Okay. I remember yeah. watching it at the nighttime. It was on during the nighttime, right, though? The, I only they might have watching re-aired it during the, the daytime. It's weird. Hmm. It was a big deal. Like, they were like, oh shit, it's new Star Wars stuff. <laughs> it's on Cartoon Network. Yeah. Keep in mind, this, like, this is between two and three. Yeah. That, that was the one that introduced, I think, Grievous as a character. And, yeah. Um, Wait, did it introduce Grievous? Uh, I think so. It was the first time I recall seeing him. Yeah. I'm sure Chloe will write it. Yeah, in and so us. we can call <laughs> Chloe's ghost and figure it out. Um, I It was so long ago. I, I kind of, I only vaguely remember. Yeah. And then it introduced like an, uh, another character, Ventress, I think, that they continued her character on into the 3D animated Clone Wars show. Gotcha. Did you see like that new era of Star Wars thing they announced yesterday? Dude, it looks so cool. The High oh. Republic. No, I didn't look into it, but I got a question about it, and I was very confused because I did not know what was happening. We can talk yeah. about it later. Yeah. yeah. High There's, Republic is, is what yeah. it's called? There's a Wookiee with a lightsaber. That's all I care well, about. There's a Wookiee with a lightsaber? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Not the first time that's Is happened. the Wookiee a Jedi? I'd assume so. Can a Wookiee be a Jedi? Yes. Yes. Whoa. I think Lucas specifically had an edict in the EU that only one Wookiee was a Jedi, which made, like, if anyone wanted to do another Wookiee, there's like, no, you can't. I mean, there's uh, the Clone Wars 3D animated show that is canon has a Wookiee Jedi. So yeah, just saying. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm really into it. Are you do you, do you are you into Overwatch, Imran? Yeah, a decent bit. What do you think? Uh, have you heard the rumors first of all of the Overwatch animated show? Yeah, like Blizzard is doing a bunch of different animated shows for their yeah. IPs. Yeah, and I can't remember if this is like a confirmed thing or or a rumor. I think it's just a rumor right yeah, now. Yeah, because yeah. they in their question they originally said it confirmed, but I changed it to rumor because I didn't think it was confirmed. Uh, I would like it to be a continuous thing. Right, like I think the idea of an anthology thing seems cool because that's kind of how it's been with the shorts, mm-hmm. right? With uh, when they introduce a new character, and for like characters that are already in the game, right? Like each character kind of has their own short to introduce who they are and to kind of build that personality. But I, f- I feel like there's been the complaint with Overwatch from a lot of people that Overwatch doesn't really have lore. Like Overwatch just kind of just has like pieces, yeah, and they don't really connect them at all. And I'd like to see those pieces get connected because during that um the overwatch 2 trailer right like where they had like the big avengers moment of like yeah everybody come together and let's defeat this evil i feel like for me right i I watched that and i was like okay this is a cool thing like visually and like it's a cool thing to watch but i never i I didn't feel that connection to the characters despite being really into overwatch despite like playing like 100 hours hours of overwatch i didn't necessarily like get chills right i didn't i didn't feel it in my heart in that moment when they had that avengers moment in that in that thing and i think it's, it's because like 
I didn't know what built up to that. Like, I didn't know, like, what, like, I don't know. I feel like there, there, there is so much more that Overwatch can do as far as telling us an actual story. Yeah. I mean, like, right? I don't, with the plots. I don't feel like there are characters, there are designs and job classes, basically. Like, I yeah. can't feel like. I have no idea what their motivations are because, like, the mechanics of the game work out so they don't have motivations. They're always working together yeah. on something. Like, when, when Farah has a voice line and she talks about talks to Sombra and says something personal because they have a connection or whatever, right? Like, in-game, I'm like, oh, snap. Like, that's cool. And at first, like, that was really cool. But being four years removed from the release of Overwatch now, I feel like at this point I would have expected a bit more from actual backstories or being able to, like, put the pieces together of what are the Overwatch, right? Without, like, reading... I'm sure there's probably comics or something yeah. out no, there. No, there's, like, a ton explain. of short stories and comics, and, like, if you don't keep up with that stuff, then you're probably not yeah. the kind of person that they want to, like, hit that feeling with. Yeah, and, and so for me, like, I don't keep up with that stuff because I got I got other things to do. Uh, I would like to see that stuff expanded more, like, yeah. actual, actually in the game, right? Or in, like, I would watch an, an animated or Overwatch series. Yeah, like, cartoons that. have changed a lot over the last, like, even ten years. Remember when I was a kid, cartoon like if you said an Overwatch cartoon, it would be like, okay, well here's all the characters and they're all working together for some reason. And, like it'd basically be a GI Joe's like not non serialized TV show basically. Mm -hmm. And then in the last ten years, serialized cartoons have become a bigger thing with Steven Universe and stuff like that. Like that you can tell an actual good story. Yeah. Within a cartoon, like Gravity Falls is a very good example of like that's a it started off as a very monster of the week show that started slowly wrapping in story elements as things went on. I yeah. could see, like, you could tell a very good Overwatch thing in a cartoon. It's a question of whether or not they do do that is the question. Yeah. Like, is that, are they putting it on Netflix? Is it going to be, like, a Cartoon Network week-to-week -week thing? Do you think it would work better 2D animated or 3D animated? I think it would work better 3D animated because that's the way I see the characters yeah. in my head. Uh, I think they'd probably, like, depends on how cheaply they decide to make it. I think, uh, what was that show? It was on Netflix and ended real badly. Dragon Prince. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, that look would probably go fairly well for Overwatch. I would actually really like that for Overwatch, because that's the... Dragon Prince is the uh, Avatar-looking Yeah, show. it was yeah. one of the Avatar directors. Not the creator, but one of the directors of the sh it show. It doesn't look like... Does um, it not look like Avatar? No. Oh. It's a d very different anime. It's like style. CG, gotcha. cel-shaded kind of look. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Are you mm -hmm. th you're th probably thinking of Voltron. Voltron. Voltron looks like Korra. Okay. Yeah. Well, well no, I think I, I think I heard Dragon Prince was from the people from Avatar, and I guess yeah. I just hadn't seen it, but I assumed yeah. it looked like Avatar. No. No, it's it's 3D animated. <clears throat> but it, I, okay. I, I could see an Overwatch show looking like that and still looking fine. Interesting. Now it's time to squat up. Caleb Sittler writes in and says, What up, KFGD crew? I'm looking for a real-life squad up as shirtless Spider-Man at Wizard World, Cleveland, Saturday, March 8th. If you see me, come say hi. I promise not to give you coronavirus. I also play a lot of games at Super Sittler on Xbox and PlayStation, so hit me up if you want to play. So if you're going to be in Cleveland at Wizard World and you see a shirtless Spider-Man, holler at them. Tell them what's up. They're, they're a KFBF. That is, that's Caleb. Say hi. Be nice. Uh, Shout out to Cleveland. Whoa. How cold is Cleveland that you can be shirtless Spider-Man? Uh, my dad texted me the other day. And it was 52 degrees. Oh, that's nice. It's then. not yeah. February. That's not normal. <laughs> yeah, it's not normal, but it yeah. is appropriate shirtless Spider-Man weather. Yeah. I have some required reading that I threw in here. People, I, there are a couple questions about uh, Rebecca Valentine's article right on GamesIndustry.biz called GameStop's Concept Stores, a laboratory, not a Hail Mary, where she goes into details about her experience going to GameStop, like GameStop Concept Stores and, and, and what those are like. I wanted to include that in, in, the <clears throat> in the show, but when I opened it this morning, I was like, man, this is a long article, yes. and we are starting the show early, and I do not have the time. <laughs> I read it last night, and it's Did you? fucking fascinating. We have, a, yeah. we have a question about it in the post show, and so we'll talk about it uh, a little bit there. Cool. But I highly recommend people go check that out. I'm going to read it tonight so, um, and so that I, I can actually sit with it as opposed to rushing through it and trying to grab bullet points for the show. Um, but yeah, that's a required reading. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong to see what we got wrong today. Let's see here. There was a Johnny Bravo dating sim. It was on what? DS and PS2. What? Really? That's what somebody said. 2009 Johnny Bravo had a video game release called Data Rama. 2009 Whoa. DS and PS2. Wow. That's awesome. Dreams do come true. That's awesome. <laughs> I was going to say we should make that in Dreams, but that works out, too. Now about, this isn't, you're wrong, but uh, I like the clarif clarification. Nailbot just says Dragon Prince looks like a Ruby animation. Is that true? I've never seen Ruby. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, it reminds me, I don't know Ruby, but it reminds me of Genlock. 
Yeah, they have like a similar kind okay, of thing cool, going on. Okay, cool, cool. Tarkovsky Clone Wars came out after episode three? No, there is no way. Unless I'm just like my... Oh, maybe. The Clone Wars... Remember, there are two Clone Wars people. It's the 2D and the 3D. It's the Samurai Jack one and the other one that got more big. So Clone Wars, the Tarkovsky TV series, was 2003. Yeah, but when in 2003? While this is happening, the biologist writes in and says, if Blizzard, if Blizzard bans you, they ban your IP from playing games. It usually happens after several offenses in World of Warcraft. And I guess, I'm assuming that's like a, a PC thing, right? So they ban your IP address. So yeah, the, the Clone Wars did come out. Uh, the 2D one did come out uh, after Episode 3 came out. Because Episode 3 was like May 2003. So, yeah. Frank, Wait, are you positive? That episode three came out in May two thousand three. Yeah, yeah. They I'm, were all the Star Wars movies until Disney were always May. No, but like I'm. They were always May. I was it not two thousand five? Oh wait, no, you're right. I remember I'm being a senior idiot. in high school. Two, no, two thousand three is uh, episode two. No, that's two thousand two. No, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Frankie writes in. Says another new release. Auto chess game Dota Un- Underlords is out of early access today and launches with a battle pass and a whole bunch of new content inside the game. Thank you for that, Frankie. And then, let me see. You're running with breaking news, but we can cover that tomorrow. And that looks like it's it for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, because these are clarifications. And (laughs) I got an error. Hooray. Cool. This week's hosts are tomorrow. We got Greg and Gary Witta. Thursday, it's me and Tim. And then Friday, it is Greg and me. Gamescast this week. It's tomorrow at 2 p.m. The topic, what games are, t- are a 10 out of 10 for you? A lot of people are upset about my gift choice that I tweeted out about for people to send in their... Uh, what was, what was your gift choice? Come on, man. Was it Batman? No. Oh, DK64? Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you know what, man? I feel you, man. I might add that to my list. I like it. Uh, that's going to be me, Tim, Greg, and Fran Mirabella. Of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>